Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. 5.7 has just dropped and they have made some huge changes with PCG. They have brought in the PCG mode and a lot more stuff. So let's look at all those together in this video. Uh, we will be exploring some of those stuff. Uh, what's new, what can be done, what are the drawbacks. Let's see all of them. So let's begin. So before you begin, obviously you need the procedural generation content plugin enabled and go ahead and do that. So once you have enabled the plugin, uh, you will find a new PCG tab here. You can access it from here or you can press shift 9 on your keyboard to access it. It's the same. So once you open it, you will find these three um, three categories. One is spline, one is paint, and one is volume. To this video, we will be going over the spline category and what all we can do in that. So let's see. So obviously, first one is a draw spline. It just as the name says, let's go ahead and draw a spline. So, this is the same as your landscape spline, but when you draw it, it automatically comes attached with this spacing tool, PCG graph. Uh, right now, you can replace it with your own graph if you made one, but we will be seeing what the defaults do. So, let's make something like a fencing or a railing. So, let's spawn them first, then do the sampling. So. I'll go ahead inside spawning, add a static mesh. I've downloaded a few fence models. I'll go ahead and select one of them. Probably not this, probably or not this either. What's this? Uh, I didn't know I had these many, I think. Okay, this looks good. Once you have that in, uh, actually, let's look for a bit of friends. Okay, these are the template ones. Okay. okay, anyways, let's add that in. So right now, it looks a bit messy. Okay, another thing important, if you click without pressing accept and draw spline, it's going to draw another spline. Anyways, once you've added that, now, now you can go into the sampling and we'll use distance sampling mode. Click that on and you'll see automatically everything is messed up. Now, we need to... If you increase the distance, you can see we're getting better. To know the perfect distance, you can just open up the static mesh and see the approx size. So we are using the x axis for this. So it's around 334. I'll just feed that in 334. And, and you have your spline. Even if you mess up, you don't need to worry. You can just redo it if something's wrong. It is super useful. And let's say, so it can, just checking if it draws on vertical surface, it does, but it looks weird. Anyway, so, and you do have an option to close the loop as well. If you come down, you can do close plan. So that again messes up the last one so these are stuff even i haven't seen yet probably no anyways so that is the spline tool i just add a straight one for now now let's say you want different meshes that can be done as well i'll add another static mesh here and we just select another fence 
probably this one. You can, see, uh, you can see no difference. So let's select another one. You can see. And you can, if you want, you can just increase the weight for this. So you have more of this, as you can see. Next thing, what I can do is inside random global transform, if this is if your object is pivoted weirdly, right now these assets pivot is just fine, but let's say your object was below the ground, you can just do a global position offset and add like value to Z right now, minus fine, I don't need that. But I'll add a random position offset for min and max, let's say minus, minus 5 and 15. So probably minus 15 and minus 5, something like that. And this is a problem. All right. Looks good. Probably have to reduce the distance a bit and yeah that is your spline tool Let's see what else it has and you can also add what does fit to curve do I don't need that you can add offsets if you don't like you can just change the sampling seed a bit if you don't like the variations here, but I don't think that's working. But yeah, it is pretty powerful. If you just want a fence or a road, you can easily prototype with this. It's not completely accurate, but I really love this initiative by Unreal Engine for doing this. So once you're done, you can click on accept. It will go off. And in your details panel, you can PCG tool component. I'm just checking if you find anything here, but I don't think so. If we can, we edit the spline. Go in the selection mode. Oh, you can edit the spline later as well. Brilliant. So that was your spline tool. Another very interesting tool which they have is the linear graph. So again, I'll draw a spline. Okay, even after accepting, it did not go away. So I draw another. Okay, I can have only one at a time. Is it that? I didn't get it. So. That's a bit weird. I still have to figure that out. But I can just probably, okay, uh, tools, new component, is it? Okay, they have changed quite a bit. Probably right click. Hmm, I can't find even convert them to static mesh or bake them option in the new 5.7. But oh, actually, I can just do it from here probably. Clear PCG link. And yeah, that should work. Anyways, let's try the new linear graph. So I'm sorry, I'm actually trying this with you guys only, so I might be wrong. Okay, so, okay, now this time, let's use the linear grammar tool. Same thing, let's add our meshes first. Uh, if you go into spawning, spawn static mesh, spawn spline meshes. Oh, okay, for this, Turn on the grammar and modules. Over here, let's just select our mesh. I'll select fence. 
probably not this fence. I'll just what is this? Fence plank? No, I need a fence. Not this either. Sorry for this. Okay. All right. So we have a fence. Let me just see if I have something, I think a pillar log. Okay. So let's say we want to add this after each fence. Let's try to do something like that. So you have your fence. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another module. And this will be my pillar, pillar log. If you see, this time nothing happens when you do that. That's because, and next, first thing, you want to assign it a symbol. To assign it B. And in your grammar, if you change the A to B, you see, it is putting the pillar log. And if you press A again, just once. And if you remove scalable, it just summons this one. So, what do you do if you want to summon, let's say, two of them together? So, insert two square brackets and you'll type A, comma, B. So, to summon one fence and one pillar, I'll decrease the size probably to 250, uh, 200. And Let's say if I want something like, and after this, repeat B. I'm seeing if this works. So it will summon this at once and end it with A. It's, okay, that doesn't work. So this means it summons one plank, one this, and then repeats. What if I wanted one fence and one log every time? So I can just add an asterisk here. Let me see, it's going to do that. Pretty useful when you have walls and gates and everything. Uh, let's now change this asterisk to plus. That is going to do the same thing you can also add a number here that means it will do it twice if i put it like four times it will just do it four times and let's say after that i want the fence to repeat or you can do something like after this i want three fences so I'll do A, 3, and then let's say we want B to repeat itself. So just type an asterisk here. Oh, okay. oh, okay, I pressed the key. Anyway, so the point was A, comma B. Let's have this two times. Then probably A three times and comma, then B to repeat endlessly. So if you see that, that is what I mean. So this can go way more complex than this. Uh, I'm still trying to learn using the Unreal forums and Unreal official documents. But next time we will try to make a proper, let's say, door, a gate, something with the linear graph. But hope you guys learned something from this. Do let me know in the comments what you feel about Unreal's new PCG editor mode. Uh, thanks a lot and please subscribe if you like the video.